you know, what's my favorite one, and I love all of them, but Psalm 142 is, is a great psalm because it's a story of David being so overwhelmed by uh, the pressure he's living under because Saul is after him. After David, uh, after David killed Goliath, um, I remember reading that the, the women of Israel, um, they wrote a song, and the song went something like this, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And that was not a very popular song in Saul's house. He was not very happy about the popularity that David got from being a victor over Goliath. And the jealousy that grew in his heart was, well, it was a sickness to the point where he was obsessed with finding David and killing him. So from that moment on in David's life, he was a fugitive. He just, he went from place to place. And if you read the historical books that tell you what was going on, and then you put them together with the Psalms, you can piece together a life of uh, mm. r real challenge. Yeah. So he gets to this one place and he goes into this cave to get away from everybody. And I think maybe just kind of meditate or whatever. And the Bible says after he gets in there, uh, 600 men found out where he w was. <laughs> they were his allies. And all these guys show up, and the Bible describes them as uh, the, the, the off-scouring of culture. I mean, they were the debtors. They were depressed. Yeah. So here's now David. He's trying to get, he's trying to get well. And <laughs> here's all his friends. A whole bunch of sick people show <laughs> up. <laughs> they all show up. And, and what's in that psalm, and I, I, I mentioned, I go through this process in the chapter, is how David worked through all of that, how he honestly expressed himself before God. And you know, Matt, that's one of the hardest things for all of us to do. And people say, well, why should I tell God what's going on in my life? He already knows what's going on. Yeah, but God wants to know that you know what's going on. Yeah. And when we open our hearts to him, when we tell mm -hmm. him what's really happening, and we don't we don't try to make it Christian. I mean, there's nothing Christian about what David said to God in that right. chapter. And he cried out to God with all of his heart. And then you watch him as he works through this. And the beauty of it is he gets to the end and he's finally now in a place uh, where he's at peace with God and he begins to sing. Hmm. And I don't know if you, man, I don't know if you've ever been in a cave <laughs> where you have all of this reverberation and you may either talk or maybe you start singing out. And I can just imagine David in there singing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, all these men, little by little, they begin to join him. Mm -hmm. And the end of the psalm is this glorious time of praise to the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have to tell you, there's something about a group of men singing. Wow. I first heard it when I was a student at seminary. I went to chapel the first time and heard you know, thousand guys sing. I never experienced that before. We now have a men's Bible study at Shadow Mountain where 500 guys show up every Tuesday night and I go just to hear them sing because it's an amazing wow. sound. And David worshiped the Lord. Someone told me this, and, and I'll get off my kick here on my favorite Psalm, but <laughs> all the Psalms start with a sigh and they end with a song. Hmm. And in between is how you get from one to the other. Wow. And most of us, we're down in the sighing part right now, and yeah. we're trying to get to the singing part. <laughs> you know, uh, that's a, a great analogy, the sighing part. There are probably a lot of excuses <clears throat> being thrown around uh, today as to why, um, <laughs> you know, people are either filled with anxiety or, or, or uh, all sorts of things. There's loss of jobs. There's, there's all sorts of disruption. And, mm -hmm. and, and there's, there's a lot going on in the United States today. So how does somebody get over the wall of what they're either angry at or scared of? What's, what's the first step to go from that sigh to that song? Well, if you follow David's pattern, you tell God what's going on in your heart. You come before the Lord and you tell him exactly what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. Lord, I don't know where I'm going to work. Uh, uh, my kids aren't going to school. And if I did get a job and they don't go back to school, how am I going to do that? Because there's no way to take care of the children. Uh, Lord, I, 
Uh, I don't know if I'm sick or not. Some days I don't feel so good. And what if I get this disease? And if I get this disease, then who's going to take care of my family? And Lord, we've been in this house now for six weeks. We can't go out. We can't go anywhere. The walls are, are closing in on us. And that's what you do. You, you, you bring that to the Lord. You, you, you pour your heart out to God. I, I don't know how to say it any other way. Most of us are not very good at that, but until we get good at it, we can't begin the healing process. And then you read the scripture and you let God speak to you. And little by little, you begin to realize that your hope is in God, that your shelter is in him and that whether you feel it at the moment or not, he is sufficient. Yeah. God is sufficient. He's enough. But if you, don't, if you don't open your heart up to what's going on in your life and become honest in your prayer, it's pretty tough for you to get from feeling lost and abandoned to being sheltered in God. You don't complain to God and leave it there, mm. but talking to God should then start moving you from that sigh to that song, mm -hmm. which is declaring who God is uh, in your life. But it, you can start in a very honest place by, by a complaint, <laughs> really. Yeah. I mean, it kind of feels yeah. that way. Yeah. You know, Psalm 107 is kind of like that because it's got four or five stanzas of different situations. One, uh, people are in a prison. Mm -hmm. One, they're in a hospital. My favorite is the one that says, um, they that do business in the waters, that do business in the great waters, uh, they see the works of the Lord. And I remember that psalm and how it's so often, you know, the people that get into trouble are the people that get out into the deep waters. Mm -hmm. that, and, you know, that's where you find the fish. That's where you find. And if, if, if you want to see the works of the Lord, you got to push off from the shore. Yeah. And, the, and, 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 the, and the Bible says the winds come and the waves come and they cry out to the Lord and he hears their cry and he sends the calm and he brings them to their desired haven. Mm -hmm. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. And this little chorus in Psalm 107 is repeated after every one of the, it's almost like open in your hymn book, verse one and the chorus, right. verse two and the <laughs> chorus. And it's, it's, it's just David teaching us how to praise God even though we're going through the desert, the prison, the yeah. storm, whatever that may be, God is still there. 